Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. Lightroom 6, also known as Lightroom CC, has finally been released. In this video, I'm going to talk about a few of the more popular features of the software. Now, there are a lot of new features in this latest version of Lightroom. By tomorrow, on my website, I'll have an in-depth article where I talk about all the changes in the software and all the new things in the software. One thing I want to mention off the bat, there was a lot of speculation before the software was released that it would be available as a Creative Cloud program only. Well, the good news is you can buy it outright uh, out of the box. If you buy it, it's called Lightroom 6. If you, of course, subscribe to Adobe Creative Cloud, it's Lightroom CC. There are some slight differences, most notably having to do with Lightroom Mobile. And in that article tomorrow, I'll talk about the slight differences. But that's good news for folks, because a lot of people don't like the subscription service. They'd rather buy the software outright, and you can do that. So we'll talk about that in that article tomorrow. Now, as I mentioned, in this video we're just going to talk about a few of the more popular features and the first thing I want to talk about is performance I've noticed it's way faster I mean it does things really really quick and the main thing for that if you go up to preferences if you have a Mac it's under Lightroom preferences if you have a, a PC it's under file and you go to preferences go to performance and you'll see use graphics processor make sure that little checkbox is checked and you'll find that Lightroom is now screaming. It goes really very quickly. And that's a good thing for a lot of folks I know were complaining that it really was slow. And this will help speed your workflow because it's going a lot faster. Now, one of the great new features is it will create panoramas. As you know, before you had to use another program to create panoramas. And I've done videos where I've used this these exact for, um, pictures here and sent them over to Photoshop to create a panorama. Well, it's even better in Lightroom, in my opinion. Before, when we created panoramas, you had to um, do adjustments in Lightroom ahead of time, particularly to your white balance, if you need white balance adjustments, sharpness, and noise reduction. Because when you send it over to Photoshop, before it goes into Photoshop, Lightroom converts it into a TIFF file. And when it gets converted into a TIFF file, all those adjustments get baked in. So if you didn't adjust, if you had, let's say your white balance was off, and you didn't adjust it before you sent it over to Photoshop, that bad white balance would get baked into the TIFF file. And it's rather difficult to correct uh, properly when it's a TIFF file as opposed to a raw file. So the good thing is you don't have to do any adjustments at first. So I have these um, four images here of this graffiti and if you look at my basic panel you'll see there's no adjustments have been done to any of them. So we're gonna create a panorama. I'm gonna select one. I'm gonna hold the shift key in and select the last one that selects all of them. There's different ways you could send it over uh, to the merge to panorama. You could go up here to photo and you go down to photo merge panorama. We could right click right on the image and go down to photo merge panorama or we could right click on any of the four um, thumbnails down here and go to photo merge panorama. And you could see this little preview box opens up. Um, I'm, I have auto selection projection checked and you can see it created it already. I mean, that's how fast it is. This is similar, though, to Photoshop. When you send it over to Photoshop, I encourage you to use auto. And it also had spherical, cylindrical, and perspective. You could try these if it didn't look right to you. You could auto crop it. I have it checked. See if it's unchecked. You see how we have these white areas down here. But I have it checked that auto crops it. And we'll just click Merge down here. And you can see up here in the status bar, it's now creating the panorama. And as I mentioned uh, about a bazillion times, I'm really um, psyched about how fast this newest version of Lightroom is. It really is very, very peppy. So when it creates this panorama, it's actually going to have a RAW file. Now I encourage you, if you don't already shoot RAW, you should shoot RAW. There's articles on my website explaining why RAW is so much better. 
and it just truly is better than a JPEG. It's better, it, it's just all the way around. You get more dynamic range, you have, you can control every pixel when it's, um, when it's a uh, raw file. So it created our panorama, it's right here, and you can see it's a .dng file. That's digital negative, that is uh, Adobe's version of a RAW file. And you can see none of the sliders are, are adjusted yet. So we could go in here, I'm just going to push these around now, I'm not really adjusting anything specifically. But you could just adjust your image from here. Now to prove that it's a RAW file, if we go down here to Lens Corrections and I in click Enable Profile Corrections, you can see my lens shows up. That's just proof that that is still a raw file because if it was a JPEG all that stuff got um, got baked into the JPEG or a TIFF file and you you know you have less control is what I'm trying to say so that's a real advantage now is when you do this merge to panorama it uh, creates a raw file and you have a lot more ability to adjust it later uh, now again uh, the other thing, the new thing, is it merged to HDR. And the same thing, when you do this, it will create a RAW file. Now we have these uh, five images here, and you've seen me use these same exact images in previous Lightroom videos, where I use different HDR programs to create an HDR, HDR image. I used Nix software, merged to HDR, whatever it's called. I've used um, uh, Photoshop, merged to HDR, and I used Photomatix and I made um, an HDR image out of these five. Now we're going to do it in uh, Lightroom. So I'm just going to click on one, hold the shift key down and click on the other and this time I'm going to go up to photo, photo merge, HDR. And again it comes up with a similar preview box. I don't have auto align checked because I used a tripod so nothing is out of it. It should be perfect. I do have auto tone. See if I uncheck that how it doesn't really tone it so we're auto toning it. I have deghost at none. If this was outside and we might have had a breeze and trees were mo moving then we'd have deghost and we could do an amount and you could show the deghost overlay which would be kind of a uh, it will show you the sections of your image that are being affected by your deghost algorithm. So that's it. We want it auto tone. That's it. We're going to click merge and again you go up here to the status bar and you see it's creating our HDR image. It did it already. We'll click on that. There it is. As you can see it's a DNG file again. It's a raw file. So we could come in here and we could start adjusting things. We could uh, turn clarity up. We could turn vibrance up. Whatever. And again we could go to lens corrections and enable profile corrections. Whatever we need to do, it's in the raw file. That is such a huge, huge advantage. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you about is some enhancements to the graduated filter and the radial filter. Now, actually, these were available in Photoshop for some time, and now they're making them available in Lightroom, and it really comes in handy. For example, I have uh, this image of the Washington Monument, and it's you know kind of a blah image. But let's say I want to add a graduated filter to the sky. So we're going to open the graduated filter, and I want just exposure. I'm going to turn exposure down, and I'm going to just pull the graduated filter straight down by holding the shift key, and pull it down like that. Now, as you can see, it darkened the sky nicely. But look what it did to the actual Washington Monument. It darkened that as well. Well, what was available in Lightroom is we could use a brush to take that away. And if you look here, it says Mask, New, Edit. It always said that, but now it has Brush right here. We're going to click on that. And you could see I want Auto Mask on in this case. You might not in some cases. Maybe feathering down a little bit. I don't know. We'll try. Now. I'm going to hold the Alt key in and you can see the cursor turns into a minus. Okay, And make sure that auto mask is still checked when you did that. And we could actually brush away the graduated filter from here. Now of course I'm going very quickly. You would go a lot more uh, carefully than I am. 
and I'm not going to do the tippy top right now because I'm just trying to show you how to do it. But that's pretty much the idea here is that you could put a graduated filter or a radial filter and sometimes when you do these filters you overlap on parts of the image where you don't want the filter to do any effect. Well you could just brush it away and you just go right here to the brush uh, function that's in the tool and then hold the alt key in it's an option key on a Mac alt key on a PC and you could just brush it away so that's it that's a few of the what I think are the more more popular features of this latest version of Lightroom and again tomorrow I will have an in-depth article talking about all the features also all my Lightroom presets work great in Lightroom, in the latest version of Lightroom, so you don't have to worry about that. If you were thinking of purchasing them but you were holding off, you could purchase them. I'd appreciate it. And they will work. They work great. So um, check that out and uh, check out that article tomorrow. And I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I really, truly appreciate it. All right. I'll talk to you guys soon.